I know that you may have certain questions to be clarified. Yes, certainly. But for the time being, it is better to mute your system. And in case you have reasonable uh, doubts and questions, we will get them clarified at the end of the session. I will give you some 30 minutes for uh, seeking clarifications. For the time being, you people are requested to mute your system so that the in-between disturbance can be avoided. We know that we are preparing, you people are preparing for the most prestigious examination of the land. And as everyone knows, it is a game through fire. This may be the only examination in India in which every aspect of your talent gets tested. In our university examinations, in other examinations, uh, it is knowledge what matters, what counts much. Knowledge is okay. Those examinations, what we have done at the university level, are examinations where our knowledge was tested. But in this exam, along with your knowledge, knowledge is important, certainly that is important. But along with knowledge, other talents are also tested. That means your analytical capacity, that's very important. Your, uh, your command of the language, the medium in which you are writing, you should have good knowledge of the language also, that is very important. Whatever you know should be uh, written on your script and hence language is also important. Uh, then your rational capacity. You know that uh, in one paper decision making is very important. Then your method of answering, I mean prioritization. You see, in the midst of the tension and confusion, there's a chance we may go by by arranging our answer in a loose style. More important aspects would be placed at the fag end of the answer. Sometimes the least little important, the least important aspect would be highlighted. So uh, that also matters. So in this exam, we should be very careful at every level. Uh, we should be very careful. Narrative answers cannot help you a lot. Whatever may be the subject, irrespective of uh, subjects, we should know that uh, the narrative style cannot bring you good, good marks. So uh, we should have a good idea of the approach. What should be done, what should not be done, what should be read and what should not be read. Selecting the reading material is very important because when uh, we read uh, a wrong literature, we would lose time. We, we, we would spoil our precious time. So selection of the material, selection of your optional subject, uh, everything matters, everything matters. So uh, I hope that uh, that's what my experience is. I hope that uh, most of you may be uh, strangers to history. I mean that you might not have studied history at a higher level. Those students who have graduated in, uh, in, uh, in science subjects, engineering graduates, they would have said goodbye to history at the school uh, level itself. Uh, so uh, let me introduce you this subject. I'm not uh, of the opinion that uh, you are totally strange to the subject, but still then at a higher level uh, exam, we should have a good idea of uh, what the subject is, what it contains, what's the method, what's the method of study, what's the method of writing answers. So answer engineering is very important. So all aspects are important. We shall count them. First of all, let me introduce, in few minutes, I will give you an overall picture of uh, history. Uh, what is history? Simple thing, very simple, what is? You see, uh, we have different ideas, opinions are divided regarding what history is. 
uh, often uh, we hear that and uh, some of us may think that uh, history is it is nothing but biographies of great men they created they created they are the prime characters in history so often it is said that history is the biography it's a list of biographies biographies then uh, we have another idea that history is a narrative of dynastic uh, dynastic developments that's the succession of dynasties and then the role of individual rulers successive generations of rulers their role their contributions their uh, failures their limitations and the like so to some people history is the history of uh, kings uh, history of dynasties of states and uh, em empires and there is a another opinion a third opinion is that it is a list of crimes it deals with war and bloodshed damage and destruction so so that is a very harsh uh, definition of history it is a history of uh, of wars story of wars it deals with uh, destruction war knows no morality so everything is being destroyed in war so uh, it is a list of crimes certain people branded it as a list of crimes and uh, a fourth opinion is that uh, that seems to be funny that in history everything except dates and events everything except dates and events is wrong so dates okay no problem with them events are also okay but the whole the, the vast majority of historical knowledge uh, is is wrong so that's a very harsh attack on history it is an example of intellectual terrorism branding it as uh, as uh, one such uh, then uh, these are uh, damaging uh, opinions by certain certain people some of them might have had some vested interest or whatever it is this is how people approach history as history is uh, are, can you hear hello can you hear or the system failed no sir okay. we can okay. hear you oh, okay so that is uh, a wrong picture all these are wrong all these are wrong assessments wrong assessments on history see we know that it is the record history is the record of human past what happened that is what we look and not only that we go one step ahead then how how it happened what happened then how when and where so there are subsidiary points to be clarified we are not at all worried about what happened what happened and the significance of those events we have a branch in history history of uh, events event event events event oriented history whether the event is significant or not whether the event the significance of the event is very important every event is not part of history it is not part of history uh, if a dog bites uh, a, a head, of, head of state that may not be important in history but in case the person dies because of that dog bite then it uh, comes to history so the significance of the event is very important so history is uh, it's a record of human past then in history uh, we find uh, the story of progress history it is a record of progress there is a man moving from the central character is man man moving from one level to a higher level that is what we we see in history other than wars and bloodshed we see 
the progress of man from his primitive form of life the uh, from the uh, the movement towards progress from zero culture stage how the man acquired the civilizations the challenges he faced and the responses he made that is what is more important than the uh, the wars and crimes and so on so it's a record of progress it deals with the progress everywhere even in killing there is a progress that is that is an important thing at the early stage one arrow uh, can bring down one person but now a modern missile it can uh, kill many so there is also progress so uh, history is the totality of uh, human progress then uh, history is the it is the uh, uh, story of technology is the story of technology i will elaborate all these points in few minutes history is the uh, story of uh, or it is the history of uh, technology how to technology or uh, improved and so on so it deals with the human past uh, uh, it said it said uh, totality the subject matter i, I will come to then uh, we have wrong notions about the unit of study what is the or the uh, unit of study the intelligible unit of historical study is not a nation but society that is very important they shall clarify history of a nation is not the sensible and uh, uh, and uh, intelligent point of study it is the study of the society in total because no nation's history is self explanatory I, I hope that you got the point. No nation's history is self-explanatory. What I mean is this much. You cannot isolate the history of a nation from the whole and then study that in isolation. You cannot study the history of England as a separate isolated unit. Uh, getting separated from the history of Europe. England, history of England is a part of European history. So it is not England, the nation, but the English society, which was composed of different sections of people and uh, people belonging to different racial combinations. So the history of English society is the sensible unit of study, not history of England, because English history itself cannot explain without referring to other areas of Europe. Avoiding France, you can't discuss the history of England. So it is not a nation like England, France or USA. It is the, the broad spectrum, the society. And it is true regarding all nations, it is true. Uh, we cannot study the history of India without reference to the Arabs, the Turks, the Mongols, the French, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the English. I suppose. After leaving them, we cannot study history of India. So what is the unit of study? History of the Indian society, society through ages. The society we know was composed of different sections of people, uh, people having different uh, racial background and so on. Uh, so that's very important. The unit of study is certainly the, the the society. So that is applicable to every every nation. And like that, you cannot study the history of uh, culture alone, because uh, cultures are intertwined. Cultures are intertwined. Uh, we know that trade is a disseminating agent of culture. So culture is being exported, that is a transacted. Cultures share, learn lessons, give lessons, and themselves get enriched. So we cannot study a culture in isolation. That is another important thing. Uh, I hope that aspect is clear. So when we look at the study of India, coming to the history of India, 
we study the history of uh, uh, the foreigners who later became some of them at least naturalized the indians who merged in the stream of life and culture of this land so we learn the history of the society the society is all inclusive society is uh, all inclusive because everyone finds a space there in a society the the great man is certainly important uh, the 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 kings the rulers uh, the uh, intellectually advanced persons uh, they are the the creative the creative ones so certainly great men I, we cannot underestimate undercut the role of great men so certainly that is true but in the indian society we have the great men then uh, the the lesser men are also important the great man is the the lesser man is there in the society it is composed of the rich everywhere that is the same case we are opening the indian society so it is composed of the rich and the poor the nobles the ruling class the aristocracy the feudal lords and the privileged people they are certainly part of the society then we have the educated section the intelligentsia the brainy fellows the semi literate persons and even the illiterate person the technically qualified and advanced ones the skilled worker he is also important then because the skilled worker has got the technically qualified person has got advanced scientific knowledge but the skilled worker a carpenter or a blacksmith a skilled worker he has inherited knowledge and acquired knowledge we cannot rule out we cannot rule out we, we need not highlight the role of the great men and rule out the lesser men according to the uh, the first theory i mentioned history was created by the great ones but here you look at the the chariot wheels of history uh, were in fact driven from one point to another by the lesser people so the un, uh, the skilled worker he is important he has got acquired knowledge and then the unskilled worker he is also part of the society society is a totality and then uh, in a society we have professional classes the weaver the weavers are important blacksmiths blacksmiths are important weavers blacksmiths potters carpenters scavengers artisans sculptors dancers musicians they all constitute the society so in history we are not studying the the successes and failures of rulers their contributions uh, then their blunders along with that people think that history is the story of kings and the rajas see actually we learn the history of these people the common people the porter the porter his knowledge is very important uh, because he knows the right type of clay and he knows the the processes various stages of processing clay converting that into a good looking pot so his knowledge is very important we cannot rule out we may have advanced forms of cooking but at, from the early stage of cooking we had a pottery which was created not by the intellectually advanced persons but by the common person who had good knowledge of the uh, the clay then the uh, processing and so on the weaver the weaver who have <coughs> who had been weaving for the community so weaver is an intrinsic unit of history you cannot study the history of a society excluding the weavers so the, he is important the weaver is important then the scavenger the menial without uh, him a uh, survival is is really a challenge 
when we uh, we enjoy sculptures we forget the sculptor so that's the paradox we enjoy works of art we forget we ignore the people who worked behind those arts the palaces built to buy we we are moved to buy the layout of a palace but we will not attach proportionate importance to the carpenter who were carpenters who worked on that building the stone cutters and uh, people who made those bricks though they are the forgotten sections in the study of history they are important they do deserve uh, a, a good good record in history because they have created it so this is what this is what we learn in history so it is the history of man but not the great man the great man cannot be ruled out he offered the leadership he coordinated things that is true he coordinated he had a leadership quality he guided him but it is not the story of such individuals who led battles who uh, ruled the states but it is the creative group which worked in the society like the ones which i have mentioned risking repetition let me remind you once again uh, the society consists of the nobility the ruling class the feudal class the landlords factory owners the capitalists but at the same time we have more important persons like the technicians the skilled workers the farmer who fed uh, all these people who produced food for all people the farmer then the carpenter who made those palaces and uh, lofty buildings they are important workers skilled workers then potters so everyone is important so history is the study of man it is a study of man how he interacted with his environment how he faced the challenges he did not run away from challenge wherever wherever there was a challenge he used to respond and he achieved progress i have mentioned that history is the history of progress and he progressed by facing successful challenges successfully successfully challenges were there one after the other one after the other we had challenges but those challenges were responded man will not run away he will not run away from the carpenter will not run away seeing the size of the timber no carpenter will will run away the size of the timber is not important he will cut it that cut that to shape and uh, he makes the furniture whatever we require so the wood is a challenge but he would surmount that challenge successfully and that leads to creation and creativity creating furniture creating buildings and so on so we cannot rule out the carpenter from the society and uh, again risking repetition let me remind you that the potter is very important the weaver the weaver is important the smith the blacksmith who made the farmer produces food but without tools without iron tools processed by the blacksmith how a farmer can work so th that person is important so this is what this is what is important not only the great men not only the rulers their highnesses their majesties so everyone is everyone has due role to play in in history so we cannot rule out we cannot rule out a particular section they, they it is a collective effort history is the result of uh, interaction of the collective uh, groups and the results of the the fruitful efforts so that is very important but at the same time we know that in history we learn about the state formation how kingdoms arose how kingship arose that is important state formation how state came into existence at the early stage we know that man was a beast that that often we call as the state of nature 
no private property at that time land was left wide open person was free he enjoyed uh, uh, limitless freedom he could pluck the fruit of his choice he can sleep uh, everywhere no one would because there is no property no boundary lines land left wide open that's the early stage the primitive man primitive man shared this life sharing the velocity of a child he moved along with nature but this early man later over uh, centuries got uh, lessons of uh, state formation later he uh, developed state boundaries emerged uh, authority kingship was created so that's a long story of state is uh, is the final result of a long process of uh, evolution and change so in history we learn that uh, state formation then social formation so how society individuals uh, got uh, united into a social group how society emerged and uh, so that's important social formation is important state formation is equally important then the evolution of language literature students may know better that at the early stage we had oral transmission we everything was conveyed orally poses and gestures and oral transmission using sound using sound every sound is meaningful you may know that every sound has its meaning at the early stage no language no vocabulary and you know script at that stage there was communication there was communication let me remind you that history is the history of progress see at the early stage no language no script no writing method still there was communication and uh, sounds were first ones we know that sound has got meaning you see our friend our friend is in hospital a friend of ours he is in hospital there uh, in his hospital bed he makes a sound he need not say that he is badly paining but the sound will give us an idea that the person's condition is miserable is badly paining so that sound is meaningful the sound is meaning <laughs> every sign has got meaning every sign has got meaning you see you know this uh, no parking in so uh, there's a there's a symbolic representation a narrow bridge going by the ru road rules there's a narrow bridge and the, it is not written that there is a narrow bridge ahead there is only a symbolic representation a school ahead it is not written driver vehicle carefully there is a school ahead and the little one should carelessly run across it is not written that is being conveyed by a, a, a symbol symbol so symbols are meaningful sounds are meaningful in history we learn how these sounds got modified into words and how languages evolved what the uh, what the symbol means the action the pose the gesture uh, the how the hunter used to invite his friends so the sounds and the signs we learn and the evolution of language the evolution of language so history is the history of progress of man from a state of taste to statelessness how he created the early states from uh, isolated individual lifestyle how he got united in those groups families and later societies then how he evolved his language so we learn in history other than crime killing and bloodshed we learn the history of the evolution of language the challenges man faced and the modifications is is the history of progress so at the early stage the scripts were not refined and polished crude letters and uh, at the early stage they used to engrave on rocks rock inscriptions rock engravings and how he developed a writing medium so these are stories of progress
see on the various stages he he faced and various challenges he over he has overcome he overcame so evolution of language that's an intrinsic part of history and then the development of social institutions family then clan tribal organizations and so on social institutions and then customs when society emerged naturally there arose customs customs uh, then conventions traditions precedents and later his literature sound how modified into language but that was orally transmitted knowledge and later he devised the methods of uh, proper writing when writing started there arose the necessity of uh, grammatical structures thus grammar was modified and structured these are various stages of progress so later literature literature the written fine literature so it's a long story from sounds and uh, symbols how man achieved the progress over centuries and then how he created his earlier stories storytelling but later he started writing them down so the development of language and literature that is another important component of history then in history we learn about a religion and philosophy we all know that religion is uh, a prime mover of history it is an important component of uh, human societies all over the world even people who lead the primitive forms of life today they have they have their forms of worship they may worship the nat natural forces they may have their local deities so religion is an important institution uh, which developed uh, in the story of man then philosophy that's very important philosophy we know that it is a cream it is a cream and often we said that philosopher is a very intelligent person and philosophy is the subject of those who know hello dear friends listen it is a, it is almost accepted but not by uh, it's by general consensus it is accepted that uh, philosophy is the subject of the intelligent ones because it deals with the complex items what cannot simply be explained so philosophy is a deep subject it is it is very deep subject it stands apart as an individual subject with distinctive features but still then it is part of history we learn religion philosophy philosophers shankaracharya his philosophy and the great philosophers and teachers jesus christ prophet muhammad and in numerable number of philosophers greek philosophers socrates plato and so on so in history we learn about the development of religion and philosophy religion and philosophy then certainly uh, we learn more in history about uh, uh, science and uh, technology science and technology is very important in history it is not the uh, the uh, study of uh, wars it is not the study of uh, heroes and the heroic and the heroism it studies uh, all important aspects of life that is science and uh, technology say i shall uh, give you an example early man used to eat the raw and the uh, zero cultural state he used to know cooking at the early stage he used to eat the raw from that stage he later that is a lesson he learned from nature he la later started cooking and the first form of cooking was direct to fire roasting application of fire in the process they used to get their food items directly fire roasted fire roasting was the early form of cooking but from that fire roasting stage you look at the progresses made in the it is in the art of cooking people say cooking is an art but it is not that much an art it is science 
it is science in the rig veda we have a branch itself super shastra deals with the science of cooking super shastra science of cooking it is a science so any go look at the progresses made first he used to eat the raw ra, then he started direct fire roasting do we have the fire roasting technology now we know that we have it we know we have it we have it but in stylized form technology is same application of fire now we have the uh, the tandoori and the the modern forms of application of fire so the present day the present today modern methods of application of heat and uh, cooking is a final version is a contemporary version of the early man's direct fire roasting so in cooking we find the application of technology so road building uh, listen friends at the early stage they made early people made country roads the country road was not durable heavy rain would damage the roads so they thought of strengthening it making it durable and the search for applying technology for making it durable led to various stages of the researchers and good results that they could make the macadam roads science students may know better macadam roads and later the macadam roads got modified into bitumen roads into rubberized bitumen roads so there is a there is an application of technology in the development of a, a road making from the early country roads to the present uh, smooth uh, durable uh, bitumen roads so that's the application of science everywhere everywhere you see in uh, in history we learn about the history of, in the indian context uh, in history of uh, medicine ayurvedic practices of uh, our physicians of ancient days and then the surgery you may wonder that in the 5th century ad 6th century ad india had a good record of cataract surgery <coughs> with success with success they used to uh, to perform cataract surgery so that is an advanced form of knowledge technology so when you learn about the development of ayurveda the application of medicine and the further developments which india has achieved we find that at every stage there is an application of technology science and technology so that is a part of our history and then uh, in history we learn art and architecture not to speak of that we know that though various forms of entertainment everything has got its history history of bharatanatyam history of mohiniyattam so behind every form of art there is a history early early man had the primitive music and primitive body movements dance is primitive dance from that stage we have progressed to the stylized modern dance forms where the natyam kuchipudi and so on so again there is a progress so nothing is heard sir there's no audio so nothing could hear sir actually the video is stuck
So sorry for the technical problem. So we were discussing about the progress of technology and the technology failed. Hmm? So here what I mentioned was that at the early stage people had no knowledge of dance. So early man had his pravichi, <coughs> body movements, rhythmic movements. From that stage there is a progress and we have the modern forms of dance. So in history we learn along with uh, philosophy <coughs> and religion we learn about the uh, dance systems, music, uh, the story of how we have progressed from primitive music to the present day stylized music, including the Western music, India's Carnatic music, and so on. Then we learn about the trade and urbanization. It is not just the story of war, we learn about trade, urbanization. Then about in history, we learn about uh, marriages, morals, marriage and to morals, value systems of societies, values and value systems of societies. Then some important things like birth of the prison. You see, when we devised the early stage, there was no jail, prison, no law, no uh, magistrate. But later, these institutions developed and uh, unfit persons should be accommodated and hence there arose the necessity of building jails. That is the story of discipline and to punish. Birth of the prison, birth of the clinic. At the early stage, we did not have hospitals and, uh, and uh, uh, centers. Uh, people were treated, medically treated uh, at their homes, but later we developed uh, the clinic. So the birth of the clinic that we learn in history. And so many other allied things like uh, construction of palaces, temples, so forts, buildings, and uh, their, their damage, their damage by enemies and the non-believers and so on. Then in history, we learn about uh, climate and environment. Is it audible? Can you hear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. About, sir. about climate, about environment, and how do we manage uh, our environment, the cultural environment, uh, the biodiversity is everything. So this is what we learn in history about science, progress of science, everything. So I, I hope that you have an idea that uh, history is the history of uh, progress. It is the story of uh, pro progress. This guy asked me to come to leave. So uh, uh, everything comes in history, whether it is literature, it is philosophy, or sciences, everything figures in history. You may know that uh, the uh, the moon mission, the moon mission, uh, the, the Apollo mission and its success, man landed on moon. Landing on moon is the achievement of uh, space physics. But it comes to history, we know that when we look at the history of space technology, we find a milestone landing on moon. Again, we know that uh, medical students may know better that uh, uh, the first successful human heart transplantation surgery was uh, conducted by Dr. Christian Bernard. So heart plantation surgery is the achievement of medical science. Certainly that is a pure medical science, but it comes into history. The, about the doctor, about the hospital, and the details. So medical science becomes history, space science becomes history, then the art of cooking, technology, road laying, trade, urbanization. So uh, it is an all-embracing subject. It is an all-embracing subject. Uh, we cannot draw a line of demarcation 
between what comes in history, what makes history, and what is beyond to that. You see, uh, again, let me uh, just one minute. Uh, you know, a work of art. Uh, see, in the in the Harappan world, we have a bronze figure of a dancing girl. That is recovered from Mohanjodaro. That particular art is a figure of a dancing girl. The dancing girl figure is a work of art. It is a bronze figure. It is a work of art. But along with a work of art, there is a, there is science application of science. The 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 metallurgy. At that stage, Indians had the technology of uh, uh, mixing copper and the tin. So there are the proportion of, the, of these two metals and how to smelt them and uh, uh, make the alloy. So these are things, pure science. But that is a part of history. That part of that is part of history. The uh, is, uh, the sculpture, which is an aesthetic art, gets combined with science and uh, becomes a part of history. Uh, so let me sum up, history is a totality. It is a totality. It is not just the list of crimes about the great men, the contributions, it is a totality. Uh, totality uh, means every aspect of life, every aspect of human life merges in history. That's the mainstream, where every subject merges. Philosophy becomes history, science becomes history, medical science becomes history, and, uh, and the like. So everywhere we find this, uh, it is uh, uh, it is a totality. Uh, it deals with uh, every every subject, whether it is science or not, or humanities, whatever it is, uh, it merges in history. So what we do in history, this is history. This is the wars, crimes, plunders, then personal uh, uh, histories, biographies of rulers. That is what people thought to be history, but it is not. History is a deep subject. It is an all embracing subject. It touches every aspect of life, every life aspect of human life. So it is a very deep subject. Uh, which gets nourished uh, by other other subjects. Everything, every subject should come to history. Then listen for civil service exam. There is a method to study history. There is a there is a method. There is a method to study history. That is very important. So I gave you an idea of what history is. What is it about? Now, what is the method to study history? At the higher level, for our civil service level, we should go with her. Uh, I, I told you at the very beginning stage itself that uh, narration may not support much. So we need an analytical approach. So there, I, I'll tell you how to uh, go with the analytical, analytical stage. I will give an example, then you will feel what it is. Is a, we have an idea that some 2000 years back, first century AD, during the first century AD, is some 2000 years back, people of coastal Tamil Nadu used to take Italy for breakfast. See, let me uh, repeat that. 2000 years back, people in coastal Tamil Nadu used to take Italy for breakfast. Whether it is historically significant or not, that is the question. Or whether they eat Italy or something else, whether it is important or not, that is what we... Similarly, it is something silly. In history, it finds no space. Whether a person eats Italy or something else is not, is not at all a matter in history. So one would laugh it away. He would laugh, laugh at it when we say that there's a history behind 
uh, the tendency of people in Tamil Nadu eating idli. Can you hear? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, look at this, look at this. Silly thing, silly thing. People taking idli for breakfast. What history is the? Let us uh, look into that. You see, the coastal area uh, did not have farming processes. Uh, rice farming centers were in the uh, hinterland. In the coastal area, there was no rice cultivation. So uh, rice was cultivated uh, uh, in a far away place, away from a center which was away from the. So let, let us see how to analyze and how to apply analytical method in the study of history. That's what I am trying to con convey. Listen. So the paddy farms were away from the coastal area. There, a person organizes farming. The farmer organizes farming. How? can the farmer work without being supported by the blacksmith he needs the tools he needs the tools the plow he needs the hand axes the pickaxes and other uh, agricultural implements he needs the farmer needs who uh, makes them the farmer no he can't so the tools and implements with which he carries out his farming activities, those tools were made by the blacksmith. Only the blacksmith knows the method to convert the crude iron into uh, tools, into working tools. So behind farming, behind the farmer, there is this blacksmith. That's a first level of application of iron technology. So listen, friends, again. Then uh, rice and uh, black ground. Black ground was cultivated. Then they should be taken to the center of consumption, the coastal area. So what was the work at that time? First century AD, second century AD, and at that time, the only work available was bullock cart. Who made the bullock cart? Only the carpenter, carpenter knows how to convert the wood into a cart. So that's the second level of application of a technology, carpenter's technology. And how the carpenter can work without being supported by the blacksmith, the tools, the chisels and the other sharp tools of the carpenter were made by the blacksmith. That means that's the second level of application of technology. So we have three levels now. First level of uh, blacksmith technology, second carpenter's technology, third uh, again blacksmith. So the uh, rice and black ground now ready in the coastal area, the center of consumption. Then how can they prepare idli? See, uh, they should grind it first. To make the idli paste, they should grind. Rice and black ground should be grinded. Who made the grinder? Only the stone cutter. The stone cutter can make the grinder. Carpenter can't make it. The blacksmith can't make it. So the stone cutter is a skilled person who can convert the rough piece of stone into a grinder. And how the uh, stone cutter can work without being supported by the blacksmith. And here the blacksmith makes the tools. He supplies the tools. That's a third level of application of iron technology. So now idli paste is ready. Uh, and now a, a particular, a special variety of pot is required. Who made that pottery? Who made that pot? That pot was made by the potter. Only the potter knows the technology to convert clay into a pot. And uh, you have the potter's technology. Now idli ready. But behind the idli, the small item, you look at the different levels of application of technologies. Are you convinced the blacksmith, his technologies, the stone, the farmer, the blacksmith, the stone cutter and the potter. So behind the small item. So whether they took idli or dosa, that is irrelevant. But the application of technology is important. This is how we go on analyzing. 
and this is how we should uh, write sensible this is the sensible approach of uh, uh, writing history i will give you an, another example which is much more familiar to you how to apply the method of study how to to frame your method of study see we have a theory that there's a uh, we should approach critically narration is not that much helpful so we have to apply our practical wisdom and knowledge and how to apply i shall give you one more example uh, to save time i shall cut it short uh, see there is a theory that early cultures developed in the river valleys in the valleys of most fertile rivers on the most fertile river valleys we got early cultures that's a statement you get the statement you get that statement then we are asked to analyze the statement we should write the answer uh, let me repeat that early cultures emerged on the banks of fertile river valleys that's a statement seemingly right seemingly right but when we go deep into that when we look closer we find that the statement is wrong the theory is wrong you see in india the most fertile area is the gangetic valley ganga river region the gangetic valley there was early culture not the present one there was no culture in the ganga valley india's culture was there on the indus region which is an extension of the rajasthan desert water indispensable for life and hence people lived in and uh, in uh, around water sources so the culture of india was not in the most fertile ganga region but in the less fertile indus region you see the most fertile region of the world uh, one most fertile center is the amazon region no culture there on the fertile amazon river region we did not have a culture the culture of africa is not found on the uh, the uh, fertile river valleys congo river valley or the zambezi region the culture of africa was there in egypt which was an extension of the sahara desert the dry zone the culture of africa was not found in the fertile river valleys there but in the less fertile nile valley which was an extension of the sahara desert you see in the middle east sorry in west asia we had the early cultures babylonian sumerian cultures they were born in the arabian desert world so the most fertile river valleys did not create culture so the theory is wrong on seemingly right but on analysis we found that on the fertile zones we did not have early cultures on the ganga valley nothing and on the other fertile river valleys we did not have early cultures were egyptian culture sumerian assyrian cultures Uh, india's culture they were found on dry zones and i shall give you the reason also why uh, to go why is a ganga valley was a heavy raining center naturally uh, the land is uh, fertile with uh, adequate or more rainfall at the early stage forests were thick in the ganga zone forests thick forests and the trees were of huge size very big trees and uh, thick forestation primitive man's weapon was the hand axe the early man's primitive hand axe would certainly fail to clear these uh, dense forests and make early settlements that is one reason early man's houses were mud houses early houses were mud houses and his mud house would perish in the heavy raining wet area of ganga valley whereas in the rajasthan gujarat area the sind region of pakistan uh, their houses mud houses would have a uh, little more little a uh, little more uh, duration lifetime these are the two reasons for the convenience of having 
houses and for the convenience of clearing forests, early people moved and settled in river zones where uh, trees or uh, forests were not that much dense as they were in the G Ganga Valley or in the fertile zones. So that's the, uh, the uh, method. So when we analyze seemingly, we find uh, the answer is right, but it is not. So analytical approach is important. This is what you have to do for a uh, civil service uh, uh, exam. Little bit analysis is important. Simple narration cannot uh, uh, support. And regarding your optionals for civil service exam, uh, at the very outset, let me say that uh, every subject is tough. Not to intimidate you, don't get panic. Uh, I'm conveying the reality that every subject is tough. And naturally, history too will be of that kind. And there is no uh, easy scoring subject. Civil service orientation is an area where you get wrong guidelines. Everyone would be giving you uh, guidelines. I, frankly speaking, I convey the truth. Every subject is tough. There is no easy scoring subject. Had there uh, been one such subject, then everyone would have opted that. If there is an easy scoring paper subject, then do you think that those students who go behind different subjects uh, are not that much intelligent? So there is, every subject is tough. For civil service optional, every subject is tough. That is, that is the first and foremost thing which you should keep in memory. There is no easy subject. And there is nothing easy scoring subject. That is one. A second thing is that volume wise, that's the quantity. Volume wise, every subject is a near equal to another one. We need not think that in one subject you have so much load. There's an Atlantean load in history, whereas in another subject, the work expected is minimum, not so. UPSC is the not to recruit candidates from a particular subject. Since uh, it, it is meant for all and uh, it cannot, UPSC cannot discriminate. So the volume wise, they are equal. See, uh, in one subject, you may find 12 chapters, 13, 15 chapters. In another subject, there will be 25. There will be some 25 chapters. Don't think that the one having 15 chapters has got a minimum work, not so. The actual work of the 15 chapters would come near to the other 25 chapters. That's the reality. So often people would say that history is too much. It is an Atlantean load which cannot be uh, be managed by candidates. That is a wrong message. Certainly that is a wrong message because as I have told you, let me remind you that UPSC is a, is a public agency and hence it cannot discriminate. It cannot make the workload of one particular subject uh, heavier and uh, it can't make a, another one comfortable. So that is another thing. So almost uh, every uh, subject stands uh, equal chance, equal chance, going by the volume. Nothing is too large and nothing is too much. They are, uh, they are near equal. Say so then, uh, what we have to do? We have to, anyhow, we have to select one, one subject. A or B. But uh, regarding history, regarding history, say, I have to say that, and that is applicable to other subjects as well. Say, you are the competent person to select your subject. No one else, no one else. So what is important? While you select a particular optional, what you have to keep in memory is this one. 
your basic interest your genuine interest is important your genuine interest whether you are interested in a particular subject that is primary that is primary and those people who have uh, master's degree master's degree in, in some subject should go with the same if you have that is what i mean if you have ma in economics you need not worry about other subjects you go with economics because the work is half done basic work is already done so those who have pg it, uh, with a particular subject it would be better to go with the same subject when uh, the person wants a new subject that would be new the subject would be new for him and the workload would be more for him but there are uh, certain students uh, who cannot fit such such an advantage who cannot enjoy such an advantage so those who from the open stream um beta candidates and so on for you people you have to choose something else a new subject you have to choose so when you choose a new subject the primary factor you, which you should count is your genuine interest in the subject your genuine interest whether you have genuine interest in that don't go with somebody else's convenience if a person qualified uh, having a particular subject make it a that cannot guarantee your success the person scored the good marks but that cannot guarantee your success so first identify your taste in which subject you have genuine interest whether it is in geography or in public administration or or polity or whatever it is your genuine interest is very vital that is very important then a second uh, second uh, uh, point to be noted is uh, whether you get good support from the institution that is that is important here we have a good team a good team of teachers most of them having vast years of experience so you uh, did not worry about whether you opt uh, polity or whatever it is whatever subject to you opt you get good support from the institution that is that is very important first uh, your genuine interest and taste in the subject and then the support our part is okay we have the best faculty not an empty claim that's what our, our students have uh, registered so uh, you will get good support the third factor that you should count is uh, the materials the right type of reading material is important whether it is available with your teachers that is important your interest support from the faculty members and then the right type of reading materials now we have a flood of materials you get a flood of literature everywhere and everyone claims that it is the absolute it is the ultimate every it is a business world so every publishing also claim that you read our our literature you read our our notes so this is the ultimate so you need not worry about that that is only claim that is only pretension so the right type of reading material whether it is available or not so that that is very important you need not go by rumors you need not go by claims and pretensions people claim there may be extraordinary claims so you may know that there is a process of normalization so you know that upsc has the process of normalization that means if you get an elevated mark for a particular subject that would be brought down to fit into a scale into a ratio so even if you get elevated mark for a particular subject that would come down that would come down 
So that is what they do by the process of uh, normalization. So uh, dear friends, keep in memory only this much. Your taste is very important. Don't go by imitations and don't go by claims. Don't go by guarantees. Your success is yours. Your hard work gets rewarded. Your hard work and your effort gets rewarded. So uh, no single option alone can support you. So it's a total exam. As we have mentioned, total history, it's a total exam. So there you need not to discriminate. Every subject is important. A particular subject alone cannot guarantee your success. It's a totality. So you keep in memory these things. One, your genuine interest, that is very important. And then for uh, the other things, availability of literature and support from teachers and so on. Pardon? Say, uh, please, please wait, please wait. So going by the history of uh, our institution, we have got uh, so many candidates qualified having history as the, the optional. That is not just a claim we have, on record we have, that can be verified. The results from the, uh, the uh, commencing stage till the present times, you can verify, that is with the uh, records of our academy. And many science students having B.Tech and other branches, they go by history. And they made good record of success also. Yeah, including the little surgeon, uh, production engineer and so on. So if you have studied history at, a, at an early level or not, that is irrelevant. We start, if you opt, if you opt history as your optional subject, then that is my responsibility to see you through the uh, exam. See, I, I will not impose this subject on anyone. It is your option. You, it is your option. You know your talent. You know your taste. You know your limitations, if any. You are your best judge. You know what subject is good for you, each and every candidate knows which subject is good. So I, I, I cannot impose it on, I will not do that. I'm the last, last person to do that. But if you willingly opt history, if anyone willingly opts history, then it is my challenge and my responsibility to, uh, to help you to get good marks that we will undertake. Along with my friend, we have another friend. So that, that part we will we can guarantee. We shall try our level best. From our part, we will get the best support, best support, so that you can uh, attain good marks. So now it is your time. We shall have uh, questions. If you have questions, uh, uh, please tell. We shall have a discussion on that. Hello, sir. No. Yes, I can. Please. But actually, we philosophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, philosophy is it just about the philosophers and the biography kind of philosophy? They propose the ideas and the gist of the Don't worry about the biography. The content of the philosophy, Advaita, what it contains, that is what you have to learn. Malayalam, sir. Malayalam, will you learn? No, sir. So, we really don't need to go. Every day, sustain the day, we should go with the English to put it on our instruction. Although, you need not worry about the question, will not be on Kalulis and Friends. Question on Advaita philosophy, suppose. That's a guest on Abduida. They will never put a guest on Shankaracharya. You cannot write the biography of Shankaracharya in this game. You see, whether Abduida is a reasonable philosophical interpretation, examine your opinion. That is the question. Whether Abduida is a sensible explanation of philosophy. 
so you have to write you, and you have to prove that if you agree with that you have to prove why why you consider consider it as a grand philosophy if not why so that is an open opinion based question so it, the question is not about the question is not about the person but about the philosophy did you get it yes uh, sir sir the philosophy is then it is like we are deep ait povunnundo adu or general awareness mathram undavullo nan certainly not you have to go far deep into that okay sir philosophy if you take if you take philosophy as your option that's your choice i will not say is or no whatever you want you should go far deep into that if you opt philosophy the western philosophical thought hegel and uh, the western philosophers like uh, uh, existentialism immanuel kant and to those great philosophers their philosophy are uh, is uh, we opt to sociology so you may think that sociology is about the caste family joint family system in india uh then the caste oriented stri- social st- stratification etc but that is only one part the other part is western philosophy western so- sociological schools like uh, the philosophy as uh, the sociological interpretation of uh, emil durkheim the uh, more that's a very uh, tough area i'm not saying that particular subject is tough but this part of uh, the western sociological development so that is uh, that is very tough so there they go it is not your knowledge which is, it is your deep knowledge it is tested so question should be how uh, much deep whether it is philosophy or sociology or any other subject thank you sir. okay welcome hello dear friends it is your time utilize it ഒരാൾ അത് ആ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ക്ലിയർ ആയില്ല ഒരല്പ ശബ്ദത്തിൽ എന്തോ പ്രശ്നം ഉണ്ട് ഒന്നുകൂടി പറഞ്ഞേ is a the for uh, prelims that that is a prelims uh that is very tough mains comparatively is prelims exam is very tough one may think that uh, so here the same same subject hello yeah the content is same the content is same same but the approach is different for prelims you go by microscopic level but for mains you go that by descriptive that's the difference subject matter is same but you see for prelims you need not learn world history but for mains uh, modern world history is included that's the only difference the other things being same almost almost uh, uh, 85 to 90% the same matter one you will read at uh, at a descriptive level the other you have to go at a micro level only that much that's the difference okay thank you sir okay the world history etra tholam namaku padikkanundayi world history that is a major major event sir these are the wordings of the uh, syllabus major events of uh, world in the late uh, 19th century modern world history history of europe and little bit of history including history of uh, modern india a little bit of history uh, from japan usa china and, and europe that much 
तो सर ट्रिवेंड्रत ट्रिवेंड्रत हमारा बड़े पिकी ना था आ जान फ्रॉम द एकेडमी ट्रिवेंड्रम सेंटर यू आर फ्रॉम वो फ्रॉम एलपी सर एलपी so i used to work in palgad palgad sub center lo njan porundu but this is my home institution and we are seeing so actually njan korchu for a while i have been preparing for history hmm. the history le uh, i have this ubilati our book so and i really find it very difficult so pardon 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 onnode ettaattu parane sir mai therikku उपयोग <laughs> So, Vinder Singh is can I that text cannot support that is an exclusive study. So we need only tidbits from that. Now, for the month's layo, that is a very deep subject. That is a very deep text. So uh, that you need not. You can consult it occasionally, but you need not uh, uh, depend too much on that. That would rob your time. that to do rob your time time factor is very important so i will give you when if you opt to say i will give you the more comfortable books that i will i will give you today itself i will give you again so that the same books should be followed for the prelims also or is it for optional only pardon please pardon please repeat Like, uh, can we use the same book for prelims also, or yes. for for the for studying optional? We yes. need to refer. No, 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 no. Same book, which book? Because uh, the book is not written for prelims exam or for mains exam. The book is meant for the student, for the reader. Hello. Ah, okay, sir. I can hear you. See, what about newspaper? Newspaper is not meant for civil service examination. Newspaper is meant for the reading public, but in the newspaper there are certain uh, elements which are important for a UPSC exam. Clear? Okay. So the study material is same, but we have to choose what we have to. Only that much. That's the difference. And then what about the book uh, uh, wrote by Bipin Chandra Pal? Bipin Chandra also struggled for independence is good. That is okay. But the problem is that that's the book which every student follows. We have a better book that is modern India, Sumit Sarkar. Okay. So you can you can read you can read Struggle for Independence, India Struggle for Independence by Bipin Chandra. That's good. But at the same time, you have to read uh, Sumit Modern India by Sumit Sarkar. And uh, another text, Modern India by Muhammad Tariq. Two important books. Okay. Two important books: Muhammad Tariq, Modern India, and the other is also titled the Modern India, Sumit Sarkar. Okay, sir. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, sir, you have already uh, recommended two books: Sumit uh, Sumit Sarkar or Muhammad Tariq. Uh, my question is: uh, both are representing modern India. Is it covered by ancient to the modern? That, that I I told you that as the last aspect of you, I shall entertain your questions. As the last aspect, I will give you what you need to read for early India and medieval India. That I will give you. Okay. You want it now itself? Then I shall give. Hello, dear ones. Please know that, please know that you know that NCERT textbooks are basic ones which you should read. But you cannot qualify this exam only by reading NCERT book. You have to read um, uh, some something else. That is a basic book to get you introduced to the subject. Only that much. So uh, here for early India, the uh, the book which you should read is. Uh, Uh, right uh, you know down the title the title is early india 
Okay. Tell in India, its author is D. N. Cha. J. C. D. N. Cha. And listen, there is a book early India. Hello. There is one book early India was is written by Romila Tapper. Ah, uh, that is. Who is the author, sir? The second book you need not. Uh, the second book is also early India. You should not get confused between these two. The second book, Early India, is by Robert. That book is very tough. It is not good for our film six. So what you have to uh, read <coughs> by D. N. Cha. D. N. Cha is the same book has another title as Ancient India. Condemn same. Both books having same content. Early India by Cha. That's an important book. That's an important book which you should read. Then there is another book. Uh, those, who, those who read for prelims need only uh, go through two chapters, the seventh, the eighth chapters on art. Uh, the book is please note wonder that was India. Wonder that was India. Wonder that was in the eyes of this A L Basham B A S H A M A L Basham. Wonder that was India. This is about the early India. We have another book on the same title, but that's not important. So that is Wonder that was India. Rusvi. That's not important book. You go with the first one, Wonder that was India, A L Basham. For prelims, read only two chapters, and for mains, you can have some some more chapters. Then, so can you hear me? Ah. Uh, so I'm a person who likes to study history, uh, but my uh, problem is like uh, sometimes it's difficult to recollect the exact dates of the events. There are so many events, right? Uh, so how wise it is for me to optimize at my optional? Hello, dear friend. I'm sorry. I ought to have told you that the early. Hello, hello, listen. So no, no question will be asked on. Dates and years. Okay, okay. Get for the last twenty twenty five years, there also no question regarding the year. Okay. So that is not at all relevant. Now, on the development level, for example, one or so UPSC history will be covered. Okay. Bend down. I'll put it here. You need to. Okay. Even okay. for university, you need not study the year. Year of days, no. But again, no. Illa. You need to study. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no. Illa. You see, I am conveying. I am conveying my experience of interacting with the students for the last twenty-seven years. Yeah. In a lot of parents, that means that I am not getting the reward. No, Illa. 26 years, and I do not think I am that old. So, on a civil service, I am not very into that. At 26 years, I could tell you that no, much of the time, I am not very into that. I shared the experience which I have told over these long years. So, you need not worry about the date and the year. Hmm. Prelims also date based type of questions very little. There is a date wise jodi at the la. The sequence, sequence is important. Sequence, I will tell you. I will give you an example. Uh, you see, there was a chambar in Satyagraha in 1970. There was Chauri Chaura incident in 1922. Quit India movement in 1942. Listen. This three, yep. 1917, 22, and 1942. Three, three events. Then they will put question on the correct order of things, order of the sequence. They would give this is first Chambaran, second Chaudhary Chaudhary, third Kuchitya. 
one, two, three. They would uh, uh, shuffle the order. First, they would write one Quit India, uh, two Jamal, three uh, the, the, the Chauri Chauri. Then you are asked which one of the following is the correct sequence of the movements. You got the question? The correct sequence. Then you have to identify what was the first event, the second one, third one, two, three. The sequence is okay. For prelims exam, the timeline, the sequence of events, that is, that is okay. But you will not get question on year. Okay, sir. Thank you. This is the model of the BSE. See, there is a basic difference between BSE. Uh, you, uh, hello. With our BSE model study, you can't manage this. And if you apply this to BSE, you will fail there. The render is important. Either what is on to BSE, it is a little bit of a BSE is a method of study, which is a little bit of 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 a little Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm. Sir? Hello, please ask. Uh, sir, namala am NCRT text of Icon of Summit, the six standard of the text of Icon of Summit. I'm going to add the method of the tenth and ninth of the Icon of Summit. It is better to uh, read, uh, the time is very precious, so it is better to read uh, 10th, 11th. കേരളത്തില് എസ് എസ് എൽ സിയുടെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് രണ്ടാം ക്ലാസ്സില് പുസ്തകം എടുത്തു വെച്ചിട്ടാണോ ഞാനതിന്റെ റിയാലിറ്റി പറഞ്ഞതാ അപ്പൊ ഈ ആൾക്കാർ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞില്ലേ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ ഏരിയ വേർ യു ഗെറ്റ് റോങ് ഗൈഡ് ലൈൻസ് ഫ്രോം റോങ് പേഴ്സൺസ് അതുകൊണ്ട് യു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് റീഡിംഗ് ഫ്രോം ദി സിക്സ് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് സെവൻ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് നമ്മളൊന്ന് ആലോചിച്ച് നോക്കിയേ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാന പരീക്ഷയുടെ ചോദ്യം ആറാം ക്ലാസ്സിൽ സ്കൂളിലെ പിള്ളേർക്ക് പഠിക്കാനുള്ള പുസ്തകത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാൽ അതൊരിക്കലും ബെറ്റർ റീഡ് യൂട്ടിലൈസ് യുവർ ടൈം പ്രോപ്പർലി യു റീഡ് ടെൻത്ത് ഇലവൻത്ത് ട്വൽത്ത് ദാറ്റ് മച്ച് ഈവൻ യു കാൺ മാനേജ് ഈവൻ വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് മച്ച് ദെൻ യു ഹാവ് ടു ഗോ ബൈ അതർ ബുക്സ് ദീസ് ആർ ബുക്സ് ഫോർ ബേസിക് നോളജ് ദ ക്യാൻ സപ്പോർട്ട് യു ടു എ ലിമിറ്റഡ് എക്സ്റ്റെൻഡ് ഓക്കെ ക്ലിയർ ഹലോ സാർ ഞാൻ ഒരു എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഉള്ള സ്റ്റുഡന്റ് ആണ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് സ്പീഡ് കുറവാണ് എഴുതുന്നതിന്റെ സ്പീഡ് കുറവാണ് അപ്പൊ എനിക്ക് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓപ്ഷനിൽ എടുത്താൽ മാനേജ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമോ ഇത് you need not go by uh, by uh, writing in detail adu iyal edu subject eduthalum iyalke bodhyam uttu varum adayathu geography eduthal edu eduthalum ki varum nam karana nammal oru engineering background il nu varumbolu that's a different thing how that you have to manage by by uh, writing uh, listen our uh, in regarding history i give you a written answer i i check questions of the last 20 years based on that i prepare questions upsc uh, questions and then i write answers in the uh, with all the compulsions of word limit 200 words not exceeding 200 words i write down the answer and i i give you the written answer you need not go read so many books and uh, write down things i will give you a written it is not a photocopy of uh, somebody else's book it is a hand written it is not a typed copy a copy it's i give you uh, hand written answers 
so you need not worry the work is done don't worry about it. നിങ്ങൾക്ക് പഠിക്കാനുള്ള യു പി എസ് സിന്റെ ക്വസ്റ്റിന്റെ ആൻസർ യു പി എസ് സി ഫ്രെയിം വർക്കിനകത്ത് ഞാൻ എഴുതി അതിന്റെ കോപ്പിയാ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് തരുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾ അത് വേറെ ഒരു ബോർഡ് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വായിക്കാനും പ്രിന്റഡ് നോട്ടിന്റെ പിറകെ ഒന്നും പോകേണ്ട വി വിൽ ഗിവ് യു വാട്ട് ബി റിക്കവർ അത് ഒരിടത്തു നിന്നും കോപ്പി അടിക്കുന്നതല്ല ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഒറിജിനൽ അത് നമ്മൾ അക്കാഡമി സ്റ്റുഡൻസിന് മാത്രമേ കൊടുക്കത്തുള്ളൂ വേറെ വേറെ ആർക്കും അത് കൊടുക്കാറില്ല പക്ഷെ എന്നാലും അവരുടെ മറ്റുള്ള കുട്ടികളുടെ കാണും ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വഴിയൊക്കെ അങ്ങോട്ടും ഇങ്ങോട്ട് വെക്കും അത് ഓക്കെ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഈ എഴുതാൻ സ്പീഡില്ലാത്ത ആള് വളരെ വിഷമിക്കുകയൊന്നും വേണ്ട ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ഹിസ്റ്ററി യു ക്യാൻ ഓപ്റ്റ് ദാറ്റ് അത് എടുക്കുക ദസ്റ്റ് വി വിൽ ഡു അത് കുറച്ച് കഴിയുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഈ റൈറ്റിംഗ് സ്പീഡ് ഒക്കെ കൂടും ഇവിടെ വി യു വിൽ ഹാവ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് സെഷൻസ് ആൻസർ റൈറ്റിംഗ് സെഷൻസ് വി ഹാവ് ഡർ യു ഹാവ് ടു അവ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എന്നെ യു ക്യാൻ മേക്ക് എ സെൽഫ് അസസ്മെന്റ് ഇൻ ടെൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഹൗ മെനി വേർഡ്സ് ക്യാൻ ബി റിട്ടർ So, uh, 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 initial problems okay, we will settle. The institute has got mechanism for that. Writing sessions we have. So, we will give you time and you can check, you can check yourself, make a self-assessment uh, how much you can write in 10 minutes, how many words can be answered. What is very important, you should not write too much. Okay? Any, any other query? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as you rightly said, we have to be sure that um, the optional that we select, we, we have interest in that. So, um, when, uh, can you like suggest one or two books just to read to understand if um, an aspirant has interest in history other than what you've already said for prelims because option will read higher uh, reading uh, is there a book you could suggest just just so that we understand uh, okay this is very interesting yes 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 i, I can so whether uh, you will buy it a, buy a personal copy or you will hire it from library what is your intention So, um, I would like to uh, borrow it from the library if possible, uh, if it is available in the Palakkad um, uh, CCK. Uh, Sender, you are from the... You are from Palakkad, eh? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you, you had your studies there in Palakkad itself? Um, no, sir. Uh, for 11th and 12th, I went to Coimbatore uh, for studying another syllabus. Then I went to Arunakulam. So, no, yeah, till 10th, I was here, sir. Oh, okay, okay. I'm an ex-Victorian. That is why I asked you whether you were, uh, you, you are an ex-Victorian or okay. So, you read an introduction. You uh, better to buy a copy. If you are interested, you buy a copy. An introduction to the study of Indian culture. There are many books. Many books are there. Uh, we, we will give you. Once we meet in the option class, we will give you. Okay, sir. I have noted it down. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hello, dear ones. Any, any more questions? Hello, sir. Hmm. Sir, for world history, can you suggest a book, sir? For world history, the best book is... Uh, uh mastering modern world mastering modern world. mastering modern world norman law l o w o e norman law norman l o w o e that is simple book uh, well written in chaste english language very comfortable you can read and digest but this is about the last last part so for early uh, this this from the world war and not words so for early developments we have many more books okay yeah, we will when then we meet in the optional class we shall uh, select uh, a few materials usually we go by the volume so that is book b p of burns b u r n s authored by four persons we call it burns 
burns volume b and c that that we will discuss when we meet in the optional class we, we shall have it so i shall do one thing i shall give my mobile number in case you have some something to be clarified you can contact me i shall give you my number those who are interested may please note it is 9944 33826 9 double four six four double three eight two six. 34624 uh, Vijay. Sir, uh, one more thing I need to ask you. You yes. said more... Uh, uh, six to seven standard uh, books are not relevant for reading but when we go through the prelims question paper 2019 i saw two, two questions uh, mm. one was the difference between samindar and jagidar and uh, the second one was about the land reform mm. so when i read the uh, class book of six uh, hour past one uh, the first part i think so i got the answers for these two questions from that textbook so they, that's the uh, the this uh, subject matter subject matter will be same everywhere but the depth is important okay sir. so, so, so in when... the, it's the standard eighth the standard sun standard you get the, the subject is the arab one culture that would be there in the seventh standard there would be three pages on arab one culture in which listen urbanization that is given in two sentences Whereas in a book dealing with the civil service exam, the in the at a higher level, urban development, urban is, would cover three to four pages. So that goes in depth. There is a reference to urbanism in the seventh standard. About town planning in the seventh standard, but that is dismissed in two, three lines. Whereas here, two, three pages are devoted for urbanism, etc. So for we people, the, the book which gives you the extra detail is important. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think if we read that uh, textbook also, some basics will be there in our mind, which will help us to uh, quote it. Since, since we are beginners to these subjects, uh, you can read it for the sake of reading. Okay. I will tell you what I UPC, NCRT, R.A.M.E.T. class in the text of Y.C.A.L. J.K.A.M. Pachuangil, I don't know how to read the books of the books. No, sir, I never meant that because I am a student from scientific background. So I have no any base in these subjects. I guess that it is can... Which can give you a rough idea, a framework only. Only a framework. The superstructure should be uh, built thereafter. It is only about a, a passing reference, only that much. So uh, you need not uh, attach disproportionate importance to uh, seventh standard, sixth standard, etc. That's what I said. Every okay. book is important. Every book is important for knowledge's sake. But the thing is that you need not depend on that too much because that can give you only a rough idea of uh, what UPSC may take. So that's the problem with read that once or twice just for getting acquainted with. But okay. examination for facing questions, if you say, listen, friends. See, in, uh, in the uh, opening years of the present century, that is 2003, 4, 5, questions were at a knowledge level, simple knowledge level. What, where, who. After 2010, the exam has become tough. After 2015, it is very tough, very tough now. So when you take when you take a question of 2005, you find things very comfortable. But that's not the situation now. <coughs> Competition has gone much more tighter than previous years. Every year, 
every year the exam becomes very uh, tough tougher and tougher it is so we should uh, share the velocity of time and move along with the changing world of knowledge that is what we have to do okay oh uh, any more question hmm. Please raise, your, raise, please raise your voice a little bit. I can't hear you properly. Sir, can you hear me? Hello? Hmm, I'm a literature graduate, but my ah. fundamental was history. Ah. So, uh, will it be useful for me to use the ICNOW material as my next preference? You say your, your literature uh, from uh, ICNOW? No, um, from Mario and Ah, okay, okay. Don't worry about uh, if you have genuine interest in uh, history. Jack, I mentioned you that the command of the language and the writing skill is very important. In your case, since you are a lit uh, candidate of literature, it is very comfortable. It's a question of simply reading, digesting things. That much so, uh, you can, your literature would certainly support to a great extent, uh, your subject will support your study on history. So don't worry about that. If other conditions are okay, you can go with that. The rest I will do. Okay, sir. So uh, as my next step, what would I refer to? You know, I have got some basics. Have you made an attempt at this, uh, this exam on an earlier occasion or you are fresh? No, I have been at the coaching center for the academy for weekend classes these three years. In my class, you have attended my class. Uh, a few of your classes. Ah, uh, okay. Then you know. Then you know what, what it is. Yeah. So, uh, what should I refer for the next stage? Say, I'm sorry, I can't identify you by your sound. Uh, it's okay, sir. Uh, so, uh, what should I uh, refer for my next stage? Uh, you are at what stage? Uh, you are at what stage? No. I just completed referring the NCRTs and uh, uh, modern in, uh, modern world, uh, mastering the modern world. So, uh, uh, what should I prefer for my Indian history? So, for Indian history, uh, you, you you do one thing. So, you read that uh, uh, early India of Indian chart where you get a uh, history on feudal formations, the uh, myth of the golden age, like that, there are a few chapters. You read that, then take my number and then you dial me. I will give you the, uh, the other, because you need not read a particular book from the uh, first chapter to the end. There are certain areas which we should uh, concentrate. So that I will give you later. For the time being, you read that uh, uh, DN chart. That's it. Thank you, sir. Oh. See, any, any other question?